they are unhappy. They must be seen. Mama, Zomba, Nebi, and Pakwach. Yes, but they are not happy. I want to make everybody happy today. Where are you, mommy? All right, thank you very much. I will now let my colleague. Yolen. Pakwach Moyo, they were not happy. Otuhe.
But as I retrieve my list, can I have Greater Massacre, the four districts, come forward? But take it a kaka yimba, kalaganti to live Uganda. Abe Massacre, abe nanyi ni Uganda. But take a kaka yimba, akaba. Massacre, massacre, massacre. Liantonde. Oh, I'm 
but for the record and the roll call, for people to understand that they should have been part of this meeting. But they are not. So thank you very much. I would now want to, to introduce invited guests that are here with us. And we welcome you. All right, Kai Goyosia is one of them. Colleagues, I want you to help me welcome Kasule Apollo from JEMA. What in Uganda? He's with Musanje Haruna, the youth leader in JEMA. Basaja Charles and his president, Joseph Kiza Kableta of Need. Give them a round of applause. Now, can you step forward? You haven't been seen. Please. Quickly, quickly. Please step forward here. Thank you very much, FDC Katonga, one Uganda. Hey, but in need, we say money in your pocket. But we are here, one Uganda, one. And one people, thank you very much for inviting us. God bless you all. We wish you success. Thank you very much, sir. May I shake your hand happily. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We have a, uh, can, uh, Gemma, can you be properly uh, in, invited here? This is Gemma. Salute us. One people. Thank you very much. Give a good clap to them. We have from the People's Progressive Party. Mr. Saddam Gaira, can you step forward here? FDC Oye! FDC Oye! Thank you for the courageous, thank you for the endurance, thank you for the determination, Thank you for taking a bold decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I will be introducing other invited guests as they come. But may you step forward, all former members of parliament, starting with myself. I want you here. You still have a big job to do. This country needs you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I can only say the struggle begins here. There is no other struggle elsewhere. Thank you. One Uganda, one people. My name is Bam Kwasa Betty Mizanila, former district woman representative, Rukujiri district. Thank you, all of you, for coming. Keep it up. This is the beginning. Elizova Tuajirachi, Tuajikuwa. One Uganda. One people. 
One Uganda, my name is Tumahirwe Fred Triamweza, former MP Rujumbra Constituency in Rukunjiri District. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm glad for Triamweza. I want you here. Aha, and here is one other one. FDCOA, my name is Hojok. B. Leo. I come from a Molotar district in the former Lao sub region. My message to you is thank you for being available. Thank you for providing leadership. And thank you for being there for the people of Uganda. God bless you. Jok Bileo from Choga County. That's what it was. Yes, Albert. One Uganda. One people. One people. One Uduman Okelo is my name. Formerly MP of Bukedea in the 8th Parliament and also Speaker of the People's Assembly. Previous. Thank you for refusing to be conformists and deciding to continue being disruptors. We persist in that path until the change we want comes. Thank you very much. Yes, give them a round of applause. They are still in the struggle. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. I want to introduce myself. Proskovia Salam Musumba. Bukabula County South. And the only chairman, family district. Now I want to introduce uh, a team of lawyers. I want you to give them a real loud hand of applause because they have been there for us in the thick and thin of the legal war. So Bole Ivan and Wanda Ronald Samuel, can you step forward? You know, lawyers are making a lot of money and they don't want to be part of the struggle. So when you see these ones, I want you to clap for them. Uh, thank you so much, Wanda Ronald Samuel. Uh, always happy to represent people who really are for change in this country. Ivan Bowe is my name, and it's always a pleasure to be part of the struggle. The people out there, I want you to give them a round of applause. You know we can represent ourselves, but at times you need another hand. Please forgive me. Finally, the people of Luer. Where are you? You are the ones, the owners of this problem. You are the ones to take it out. This is Greater Aluero. Be on display. Aha, uh -huh, one Uganda, one people. Aha, uh -huh, that is the triangle called Luero. All of you go home knowing we are. We are looking for another Luero to liberate us from Katonga Base. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Dr. Olive Kobusinje. Thank you. You have always been there. That is Dr. Olive. Whenever we are hurt, whenever we are physically assaulted, wherever our bodies are damaged, she's always there. So thank you very, very much. I'll continue the introductions, uh, but for now, allow me to welcome the party chairman, Ambassador Waswabirigwa, Omulongo, to come and give his welcome remarks. Thank you very much. 
Musajja mukulu yimirira wali soket kulabe. Aha. That is our Aha. Come and welcome all your people. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't even know what to say now. This is a long, long journey. Really a long journey. Since, I'd say, 19th of September of last year. First and foremost, I'd like to recognize our founder and our our, our bosom buddy, Dr. Keys of SCJ. I call him the father of this party. I recognize the interim president, President Dr. No, it's not a doctor. I have a doctor. Rukwago, Lord Mbeya, who has been steering. I would like also to recognize my, one of my elders, Honorable Wafula Ogutu. All the members of parliament who are here and those who have just arrived, I don't think some of them, Naboth has not been introduced. I saw him coming a little bit late, but he's here from Rokongiri also. I'd like to welcome the invited guests. I would like to welcome all of you who have been able to make it from all the district, district chairpersons and your, your entourage. I thank you so much for having made it not easy because most of you have had to pay for yourself to get here. And I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I'm here a few words. Mostly, I'm looking at the of today, which is first to the struggle of freedom. So the word is a very, very important word because every one human being, even now, yearn for freedom. Somewhere in 15, 58, there was a gentleman who talked about freedom. And that was Abraham Lincoln. He talked about freedom. They either, either you're free or you are a slave. And I think where we have reached in Uganda, we are close to being what? Slaves. So if we are indeed slaves, then we must break the chains of bondage so that we become free. We are here at Tonga, and I think this is the beginning and the end. The beginning is going to be here. If there's going to be an end for this country, it's going to be where? We are the one who've got the torch to take, to take this country forward. We are the one who's been given the mantle. Nobody else. No one else. The people you've seen here coming from all over Uganda, they've sacrificed. And right here where we are, we have a person who has sacrificed more than all of us. And that person is Haruna Biamkama. Where is he? Haruna is here? Or he's right behind? He took bullet on our behalf. At Bulangi. He is crippled. He is in a wheelchair. But he has never, ever giving up, and he's still fighting. Go for him, please. Some of us 
have been in jail, tear gassed, and obviously we have lost many, many people. We have, as you've already heard, 36 of our members who were very, very active, who are now rotting up in jail. beaten up and brought back in chains. Ladies and gentlemen, chains don't necessarily have to be chained. We are chained in our minds because we refuse to liberate ourselves. How can we fail to liberate ourselves when we look at this number? and the millions that are there all over Uganda. How can we fail when only a few, not even probably 2,000, are seated on our heads, doing as they wish, spending our money as they wish? How can we allow that to happen? Well, this is me. Today, you delegates, shall decide what we are going to do, what path we are going to take. It is really up to you to decide what we ought to do. We traveled throughout this country. I was among them all the way to Cotido. Hence the reason why I guess you have seen some of the big, one of the biggest number that have come here are from Kalamoja. We went to all those places. We thank you so, so much. I would like to take also this opportunity to thank all those people who welcomed us in your cities, in your villages, when we were touring. When we came to ask you a question, or questions, what do you want? What should we do? Which way forward? Today, you will decide. We have collected all that information so we can bring them to you. You will decide where we ought to take this country. How we're going to take this country. Do not lament about FDC anymore. I'm not lamenting anymore. It's great. Some of you have you miss mama, you miss papa, but you started another home. I want to leave this place knowing there's a place we are going. I can see we are going. And where we are going, we are going to State House. We shall take power, Allah. But in order to do it, nobody gives you power. We have to take it. We have to grab it. We have to scratch, kick, do whatever we need to do. We must take power. Today I'm charged up. I don't know why. I don't want to take so much time except to now to thank you once again for having made this long journey to be with us, to stay with us. I know you didn't go to Najana and Kumbi. I know maybe we missed drinking. <laughs> but here we are, and you are the people who are going to take this nation forward. I thank you very much, and I hereby declare 
this meeting opened. God bless. Another round of applause for Chairman. Escort him with a hand clap. And Mr. Chairman, I want to report to you that you have quorum. We have 804 delegates that have signed up here. Thank you very, very much. As the interim president comes to give a report of NEC, please take note that we have the Secretary General for Ecological Path of Uganda. It's a party. And the chairperson, inter-party platform is also here. Please step forward, ladies. Clap for the ladies. Solo Irene from Jukupati of Uganda, the Secretary General, and also the, uh, the Chairperson, Interpata Women's Platform. I'm happy to be here and uh, wish you all the best and the good deliberations upon this baby and the journey that you're about to start. Thank you so much. We believe that you, you will excel. Thank you. Let's go to Nasolo Irene with a hand clap. Mr. President, the Lord Mayor of Kampala. I want to call him the chairman of this sitting because we are in his place. Please, Mr. President, come and give your report to the delegations here. Pleasure to welcome you all here. My duty is very simple to present our report to you, consideration. And you'll all get copies. So I ask the team doing that proceed very fast to distribute copies as. I proceed with the I mean with the delivery of the report. And here is the report. Yes? Okay. Here is the report, ladies and gentlemen. I beg for your indulgence and silence. The party chairman superintending over this delegates conference, the FDC founding president, Colonel Retired Dr. Chiza Besje, honorable members of parliament, members of the National Executive Committee, members of the National Delegates, all of you who are here, our invited guests from different entities who have already been introduced to you, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be very fast. 
It gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome you all to this 8th Delegates Conference of the Forum for Democratic Change. Welcome to Katonga, the command post for the national liberation struggle, but also serving as a haven or sanctuary for the mighty FDC family close to a year now. That is, since self-seekers nefariously took hold of our party headquarters in Najanangumbi. Brothers and sisters, and the entire blue, color blue family of fraternity, join me in expressing our profound gratitude to our founding president, projector, and for his all you think the course. Retired Dr. Chiza Vesiji, you are in a rare breed, a source of inspiration, a beacon of hope and a bright star in the face of heavy storm and darkness, a selfless statesman whose compassion knows no boundary, we celebrate you, Papa. <laughs> to our co-host, Ereda Honarebo Chapaka Rohanga, Regrettably exiled by the very people you helped assume power, your generosity and wise counsel has rekindled our apparently waning trust in the goodness of the current crop of elders. His Excellency, Ambassador Waswabirikwa, you deserve a pat on the back for your tenacious grip onto the original Bonita key and never surrendering it to impositors. We treasure that key. For the architect of the whole plan, the indomitable Honorable Salam Musumba, thank you for being a sword in the times of uncertainties and adversity. I wish in the same vein to extend similar thanks and appreciation to colleagues at NEC, as well as the bona fide FDC leaders at all levels. Permit me make a special mention of the indefatigable Honorable Ibrahim Semujunganda. The indefatigable Honorable Semujunganda, the chairperson organizing this delegates conference, who has pitched the camp here at Katonga for the last one month, fixing nuts and bolts to ensure that this delegates conference is a success. He deserves a hand clap. <laughs> Mama, right honorable Betty Ahor. I hope I have pronounced it well. And all our Katonga best MPs, we thank you for leading from the front. Of course, not forgetting the team at the Secretariat, led by our Secretary General Harold Kaija, Right Honorable Wafra Ogut, Man of God Musei Wycliffe Bakandonda, women leaders, youth leaders, among us others. Allow me also mention the team that worked with the Honorable Semuju, his deputy, Honorable Muijushe, and her worship, Doreen Nyanjura, who mobilized all the funds for this particular delegates conference from all of you who made the contributions. <laughs> to the rank and file, you Kalam Blue members across the entire country, I can't thank you enough. The debilitating and harsh economic environment imposed on you by the joint are not withstanding. You stood firm and resisted all sorts of manipulations, intimidation, cajoling, and freebies, all groceries, and all sorts of allurements, including 
some drinks. Dango that you by the Najanankumbi impositors and their facilitators. In you, we have a solid rock upon which the struggle is anchored. Thank you. <laughs> On my part, it can't be again said that this tumultuous journey of 11 months, it's 11 months exactly today, since you gave me this mantle. Yes, it cannot be again said that this tumultuous journey of 11 months at the helm of our Birija Departe have been quite challenging given the enormity of the task entrusted to me and my team, as well as the rugged political terrain in our country. On the flip side, I feel humbled and elated for the opportunity given to me to serve in that coveted position and the amazing support and the trust vested in me. Thank you, dear delegates and all members. I will eternally be grateful for that gesture. May I say, the journey has been a tough one, but also quite eventful and memorable. Your unwavering support, resilience, steadfastness, and sacrifices have been a lifeline and source of impetus for my leadership. The FDC journey at a glance. The date of 7th August 2004 will remain in the annals of this country as a memorable day when a group of, a group of hitherto under the rubric of three formations to it, the former agenda, parliamentary advocacy forum quality Pafo, and national democratic forum convened at Bonita Gardens in Ruboa and made a landmark decision that fundamentally changed the political landscape of this country for a period of close to two decades now. A strong accord or bond was struck amongst themselves, personal interests shared, and, um, and as well as also ambitions shared, and unanimously agreed to midwife a single entity, the beloved FDC. This nascent institution that would later become a formidable force to reckon with formally entered the record of political formations recognized under the law on the 16th day of December 2004. The commission of the founding of this party is duly stated in Article 6 of the FD's constitution thus, the goal of the party shall be the establishment of a truly united and peaceful Uganda and the empowerment of the people of Uganda to achieve a better quality of life for all Ugandans. Against the background of political instability, a near moribund state structure, and a decayed society of fabric, amongst other considerations, the progenitors of the FDC agreed on a laudable motto enshrined in, our, in Article 5 of our Constitution, One Uganda, One People, Ra. Ja. Ah. Over the years, this mighty institution has grown leaps and bounds and invested national character with a strong membership from the entire country. We are, you have also demonstrated it here. The entire country is gathered at Katonga today. And today is the day for the Ugandans to assemble and make a proclamation for the journey ahead. It is worth noting that it's worth noting that for the last two decades, the FDC has served as a study platform for the liberation struggle and the vanguard of economic, uh, I mean, democratic governance, civil liberties, and social justice. Using the strategy of defiance envisaged under Article 3 of the National Constitution, the FDC, as the nerve center for a wide spectrum, of the democracy-seeking forces has championed the protracted struggle for rule of law and the constitutionalism, and the milestones achieved are well documented. It is truism to state that FDC brand has always been synonymous with robust internal democracy, which has been prototype or template for different organizations within and outside Uganda. Much as the founding president was in exile, 
at the time of the formation of SBC, delegates who assembled at the first convention unanimously returned him as the first party president. The subsequent three hotly contested elections, say presidential elections, returned the Colonel Dr. Chiza Vesiji, General Mugisha Muntu, and Honorable Patrick Oboi Amuriat as duly elected presidents in a free and fair exercise, these are two unprecedented in our country. However, you all bear testimony with a great concern that the leadership of Honorable Patrick Oboi Amuriat capitulated to the devious maneuvers and overtures that the party had resiliently and valiantly resisted for several years, thereby veering off, veering off the party constitutional path, particularly the party vision, mission, and values enshrined in Article 6 and 8 of the Constitution. You'll make a reference to that. And that is a serious indictment. It's a very serious one, which we cannot give space or tolerate. Those idiosyncratic of the world developments compare the delegates who assembled at an extra national delegates conference that convened at this very place on the 19th of September 2023 to, to suspend the then party president engineer Patrick Oboi Amuriat, the then secretary general Honorable Nanda Ramafari, and the treasurer general Honorable Geoffrey Kanya. The delegates Father is all of that during suspension, the Deputy President of Uganda, Honorable Elias Lukwago, you can see his worship. <laughs> should serve as the interim president. While Honorable Francis Mijushe, who was a deputy to Honorable Joseph Kanya, and Honorable Kaija, who deputized Honorable Nanda Lamafan. Performed the, no, performed the duties of Treasurer General and Secretary General, respectively. So for the members who were suspended, the tenure of other naked members was extended for a period of six months from the 8th of October 2023, when the tenure was set to elapse. The Total Commission was also disbanded, and an interim electoral commission was constituted with the mandate to organize the free, fair, and transparent and credible internal elections. This commission comprised of Honorable Michael Karas Gruka as the Chief Electoral Commissioner and the three other members to wit Honorable Jack Omayu Amanga, Dr. Elizabeth Tualarie, and Mr. Bonne Ogonson. The interim leadership was also tasked to set up a disciplinary committee to expeditiously investigate the suspended leaders and further instructed us to challenge in the courts of law the October 6th Sham Illegal Delegates Conference that was organized by Nadia Nankund. A progress report on the implementation of the aforesaid resolutions was still presented to the National Council sitting that convened at this very place on the 21st day of February this year. A synopsis of the progress report presented to the National Council of 21st February 2024 and the resolutions there alone, because that's what gives the fresh to this, the fresh to this particular delegates conference, the genesis, disciplinary action and litigation. Upon assuming office, we immediately extracted the aforesaid and submitted the same to the electoral commission as required under the law with the demand that the record should capture the true position of the party. Unfortunately, up to now, the commission has not responded to our communication. Take a note of that. The same resolutions were forwarded to the banks, but still no positive response yet. The imposters continue to receive statutory funds from the electoral commission and spend the same illegally with the reckless abandon. Our efforts to pursue the disciplinary committee, or rather the disciplinary process, have been thwarted by a number of impediments which are logistical and structural. In it. The foregoing notwithstanding, the position remains that those masqueraders are still under suspension, no matter the posturing and the brand standing. I'm glad to report to you that all bona fide and well intentioned members countrywide and in diaspora branches 
have rounded and rejected them, and they are left with no iota of credibility. <laughs> On the issue of litigation, members, you are aware that the party has been embroiled in a conundrum some good time. In the run up to the 19th of September, 2023 extraordinary delegates conference, the imposters had engineered machinations to fraudulently secure a court order from the High Court Division presided over by Lady Justice Esther Nambayo to upstage or forestall the said conference, but already came. The purported ex parte order, earlier secured by collusion on 15th September 2023, was never extended nor served on Ambassador Billy Gwad, the national chairman, and it lapsed on 18th September 2023 on the eve of our delegates' conference. Therefore, our delegates' conference was lawfully convened, and the resolutions thereof were binding and have never been set aside in any courts of law. The reason I'm standing before you as your bona fide and legitimate federal president. We also proceeded to file a civil suit in the High Court number 387 of 2023. Ambassador was and 27 others versus Boniface Peter Buka Bamwinda challenging the processes that were being undertaken to hold the aforesaid uh, legal delegates conference at Patida Samaj Lugogo on the 16th of October 2023 under the ages of Peter Buka Bamwinda Commission. We specifically sought for a permanent injunction restraining the impositors, their agents, servants, or employees acting under them. One, from holding out, from holding the office of the Chief Electoral Commissioner, FDC, without the express mandate of the National Delegates Conference. You know for record he has never been elected by a Delegates Conference. Holding and all presiding over the internal elections for the leadership of the structures of FDC. And lastly, convening the National Delegates Conference that was selected for 6 October to elect members of NEC. Distinguished members of the National Delegates Conference. The aforesaid suit is still subsisting. It had been allocated to Justice Musa Sekana, but we requested the matter to be allocated to another judge. In that suit, we had filed an interlocutor application seeking for temporary injunction to stop the Patida Samuji purported Delegates Conference of October 6th. Unfortunately, in his midnight ruling on the eve of the purported Delegates Conference, just Sekana declined to grant it, giving spurious reasons that it had been brought in a bad faith. And indeed, it's the ruling which was in bad faith. The fortunate bit of it is that the decision of Justice Sekana did not clause their impand Delegates Conference with legality or legitimacy. However, the main suit has not been conclusively heard or disposed of. I wish also to report that we registered a major victory in the Uganda Road Court case that had been instituted by the Najanan Kumbi Quislings through a proxy, a one Jamaru Wante, challenging the legality of our national chairman, via the criminal case number Uganda Road 1688 of 2024. The court roundly threw out the case on Thursday last week, the 15th of August, thereby cementing the authority and the legitimacy of Ambassador Waswa Piriwa as the undisputed and the unbroken party chairman. <laughs> he is unbroken, but you remember how he jumped over the fence to escape from yeah. those masqueraders. Internal elections and the party structures. The delegates conference is set up an interim electoral commission chaired by Michael Karasbruka to organize transparent, free, and fair election of the party. However, we suffered some setback in that the commission chairperson got the challenges that rendered him unable to effectively execute his mandate. But notwithstanding, we managed to proceed with the task. And uh, where we stand today, structures have been built at villages, parishes, sub counties, constituencies, and district levels across the entire country.
clap for yourself. Thank you. We must commend you for the commitment, zeal, and passion for your active participation and involvement in this exercise, which has been largely successful despite the limited resources and other impediments. At the time we had built, at that time when we presented the report to National Council, we had built structures up to, I mean, up to the district, and it was 80%. Now we stand at 100%. A big achievement. Number three, 3.2 rather, collaboration with other forces of change. In addition to the aforesaid resolutions, NEC had to take an, an additional assignment as anchored in the FD strategic plan 2022-2027, the one which is running, of enhancing the collaboration with other forces of change. We launched this at Najana Nkongi before the junta, I mean the, the masqueraders took over. In our strategic plan, we agreed to continue with our strategy of defiance and in our non-violent struggle. In advancement of the said strategy, we had to jointly work with other forces of change. And we have had a series of engagements, meetings, public appearances, and a number of activities. I am pleased to inform you that we have, con we have cemented the bond with different formations. And on 16th January 2024, we also said here at Katonga a joint press conference to pass on the New Year message that would give direction to Ugandans on how to regain their sovereignty. The press conference was addressed by our party at Dr. Chiza Resige, local president Honorable Robert Chagrani, Honorable Winnie Chiza on behalf of Auntie, Dr. Luru Mebayegao, Progressive DP, Council Peter Warubiri of Progressive UPC, PPP President, H.T. Wasadamu Gaira, among others. Those particular leaders made a personal call to all Ugandans to rise up and challenge the junta through demonstrations and political activism. We had lined up a series of joint activities countrywide, starting with Kampala leader and Igang. For Kampala, we had an activity to awaken the people of Kampala about the deplorable state of infrastructure. The Kampala activity coincided with the NAM and G7 Plus China uh, conference that was used as an excuse by the junta to, be, to employ its brutal arm to fight all our efforts. Some of us were detained and put under our service for a full week. Can I do that? Is the myself and the Honorable Robert Chabran. That notwithstanding, we remain committed to a joint platform to push back and regain control of our country. Now, proposals and resolutions on the way forward at that particular meeting. NEC recognized the fact that the party was engrossed in a rather intricate and labyrinthian debate about the trajectory of the party and the struggle. And it deemed it prudent and imperative to present the various permutations as they were suggested by various members of the party to the permutations, the options. Number one, should we continue with the fight it raised to our party and evict imposters from our headquarters at Najana Nkund? That was number one. Two, reconcile with the imposters on condition that they voluntarily vacate party offices at Najana Nkundi and denounce their nefarious conduct and scandals, and we have to add that after cleansing the press of the whatever they did there. Three, the bona fide members of FDC who are still committed to the struggle to push back the junta constitute themselves into a new formation which would entail dissolving the FDC party. Four, continue advancing the struggle under a framework of the social movement akin to the reform agenda and forget all about the divisive party politics. These two will maintain the dissolution of FDC and not forming a new party. The last one was join other existing political parties or acquire one which is dormant or in abeyance. Those were our proposals. After thrashing out all those issues, Members of the National Council unanimously resolved that wide consultations be conducted with the party structures countrywide within a period of three months. Accordingly, the program was drawn for structured engagements on regional basis. The delegates' conference 
which had been hitherto scheduled to take place on 19th March 2024, was accordingly postponed. The consultation process. Consultation with the party founding members. The National Executive Committee consulted the founder members of the party at a meeting convened in Namugongo on 23rd October 2023, who appreciated the efforts that had hitherto been undertaken to address the crisis for the very part. The thrust of their concern and reaction was that the interim leadership should explore all, all available options to reinvigorate the spirit and ideals espoused and agreed upon at Bodita on 7th August 2004. They emphasized the dire need to jealously regard the sanctity of the institution and the pedigree, painstakingly built out of sacrifices and the blood of many forefathers and other Ugandans. Nationwide consultations on the way forward. The National Council of 21st February this year considered the party president's report and it resolved that the five optional pathways be presented to the wider party leadership across the country for consideration so as to build a broader national consensus on the way forward. The national consultations kicked in earnest on 11th March 2024 with the, with the Kampala and Wachiso district structures at, the, at a meeting held in Chireka, Chira municipality. That inaugural meeting again was organized by Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Nganda. Thank you very much. We proceeded to engage with the leaders from across all the sub-regions of the country and below is the roadmap of the consultation tours. We have the, 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 the regions and the dates we visited you when you made your own submissions. You recall very well. You will cross-check. Fast forward on page 9. In as much as these engagements were intended to solicit views of members of the party in the structures, in some areas, open public meetings were conducted to further advance the message of the struggle. Mr. Chairman and Honorable Delegates, permit me to pause and extend a vote of thanks to our patriarch, Dr. Kiza Resige, who made the sacrifices to ensure that these meetings are a success. He deserves a big clap. He attended and he guided each of the meetings in person. He never missed even a single meeting countrywide. Similar appreciation, similar appreciation goes to all members of NEC who defied all odds that militated against us in conducting these meetings. And he held fought in my absence as I was announcing a grave health challenge that required a surgical operation in India and took place in the airport this year. And praise be to the Lord. Uh, am I not firm enough today? The Lord is great. Of course, not forgetting all of you dear delegates and members of the party across the entire country who exhibited enthusiasm towards addressing the current debilitating situation. Clap for yourself, members. You participated actively. We owe you all that you deserve. Because of the hitherto unforeseen imponderables, the whole consultation exercise took much longer than expected, thereby necessitating extension of the same. Inevitably, the delegates' conference had to be postponed once again. Two other virtual National Council meetings were accordingly convened by the National Chairman the first one being held on 19th March 2024, which scheduled the delegates' conference to 2nd August 2024, and the second one held on the 26th of July 2024, which moved the delegates' conference to, to today, the 19th of August 2024. And I thank you very, very much for all these activities you did in ensuring that this succeeds. And allow me here, allow me pause again. And thank one person here who steered almost everything. My brother Kenneth from Kenneth, Kenneth Okero. Opoka, yes, Kenneth Opoka. Where is he? From Agago. 
He's been here on a daily basis. Thanks very, very much, Chairman Opoka. Thanks very, very much. The purpose of today's delegates conference and way forward. Today's congregation is required to process the proposals generated from the consultative engagements in, in, in 17 out of 20 regions regarding the trajectory of the liberation struggle. Let me repeat this. Today's congregation is required to process the proposals generated from the consultative engagements in 17 out of 20 subregions, those we have in our constitution regarding the trajectory of the liberation struggle and the platform to advance the same. In concept terms, the theme of today's delegates conference is refocusing the forces of change to the struggle for freedom. Upon concluding the aforesaid consultations, next a gigantic exercise of synthesizing the views and the proposals stated, and I have the honor to present a snapshot of our findings. Number one, reconciliation. Some scattered voices of reconciliation came through, particularly from Teso subregion. Wenzori and our choice subregions too mooted the proposal of making attempts at reconciliation with the Najana Nkumbi renegades, failure of which a new formation be established. New formation. Apart from the aforesaid three sub region, the rest of the regions that were consulted, there were 17, unanimously coalesced behind the idea of establishing a new political party and completely severe any relations with the Najana Nkumbi impositors. May I repeat this? <laughs> Apart from the aforesaid three sub regions, the rest of the regions that were consulted, the 17 regions, unanimously coalesced behind the idea of establishing a new political party and completely severe any relations with the, the Najana Nkumbi imposters. <laughs> now listen to the implications. This of necessity will entail the dissolution of the Forum for Democratic Change. Whichever is born of women, this of necessity will entail the dissolution of the Forum for Democratic Change under Article 36 of the party constitution which provides thus which provides thus a the national delegates conference or the special conference may dissolve the party by two-thirds majority of all delegates of national delegates conference and transfer the assets and the liabilities of the party there must be a notice of at least six months there must be a resolution from two-thirds Conferences. The resolution must be supported by at least 80% of the attendance of the delegates' conference. Upon considering the aforesaid proposals, NEC hereby presents before you, the Honorable Delegates, the following recommendations for this delegates' conference going forward. Number one, we ask you to adopt this report. It's your decision. Two, that the process of dissolving the Forum for Democratic Change Political Party should commence in accordance with the provisions of Article 36 of the FDC Constitution. Three, initiate the process of forming a new political party and or coalescing with any other viable formation that is in existence. Four, that the tenure of the current leadership of the FDC be extended and be charged with the duty of pursuing the processes in one, in a two and a three above. That is what we are asking you to do. It's up to you to take a decision, one or the other. As I conclude, I would like to formally bring to the attention of this delegates conference a lamentable grave concern regarding some of our colleagues whom I would want to call 
the Chisumu 36. Who do deny be with us this morning? But regrettably, a languishing in Chitalia and in Uzira prisons over trumped up charges of terrorism. As part of our continuous political mentorship program, 35 leaders of the party traveled to Chisumu, Kenya, on the 23rd of June 2024 through the designated border points and were cleared by the immigration departments of Uganda and Kenya for a week long of training at Uberi Catholic Pastoral Community Center. Unfortunately, they were violently abducted from hotel rooms together with a refugee, Mr. Simon Rutarondwa, hosted by the Kenya government in the wee hours of 24th June 2024, shortly after their arrival. They were tortured, their property to wit, computers, telephones, and other personal effects confiscated. They were illegally removed from Kenya and charged with the terrorism without any due process or passing through the immigration protocols. On the 6th of October 2024, we petitioned the High Commission of Kenya in Uganda in a communication referred, referenced that one, registering the party's displeasure over the same. This grotesque operation constituted an affront to not only the Bill of Rights, but also the national laws governing extradition and the deportation. No, yes, the international laws, not national laws, the international law governing extradition and deportation and all aspects, and in all aspects, this amounted to a crime of torture indictable under Article 5 of the Rome Statute. As a sovereign state and senior partner of the East African community, it was a great breach of trust for the Kenyan government and the Kenyan people to allow Ugandan security operatives to commit crime on the citizens of Uganda and whisk them away under their watch, much against the international law principle of Pacta Sunt Sabanda in relation to extradition laws of both countries and the East African Treaty, because we are free to move within the region unfettered. We expressed our deep concern and responses as to whether Kenya government was aware of this abduction. in Kenya, as demonstrated by the kidnap of the FDC leaders, and the blatant rights sanctioned by the Uganda, is Uganda declared, no, yes, is Uganda declared a, a, a Kenya iron neighbor? Terrorist training camps from, from which Uganda government has chosen to operate within Niri. Our party leaders were deported, we want to know whether our party leaders were deported or extradited by the Kenyan authorities, which have said did not conform or comply to the national, international laws and standards. And uh, finally, is Kenya safe for visitors, tourism, or business? We wanted to get answers to all those questions. Unfortunately, as we speak today, we are yet to get a response. Very unfortunate. For the record, the full list of the Chisumu 36 is here under. Yes, they were mentioned by the Honorable Salam Musumba, but it, because of the significance of this matter, allow me to read the list here again. Sam Makoha, Simon Rutarondo, that is the refugee, who is generally supposed to be protected by Kenya. We want to know if actually they handed him over to Uganda in total breach of international laws. Dr. George Kwaro, Charles Nkonge, Poka Wanguzi, Nasur Basariwa, Latif Waiso Amaido, Charles Wangabu Kenya, Kita Amerike Mbo, Mbago Buyenza, Kasera John Mangen, Akembu Kenya, Peter Sozi Oringa, Walter Obang, Cha, Chankara Moses, Mwaka, Yosia Kaigo, George Wanzige, Seven Rutaron, I mean Rondesa, Pinge, Dennis Nono, Owachi, Owachibu, Grace Narunkoma, Florence Lalam, Denmark, Adios, Beino Mugisha, Ronald Mohinda, Henry Mpungu, Ronald Sozi Naguba, Richard Tugabirwe, Siri, Sirino Okero, Owen Aimbisiwe, Simon Peter Nsubuga, Adam Wakawi, Conrad Kimonge, uh, Henry Buyondo, Fairuzi Ngobi, Robert 
Owamani, Arthur, Pugumisiriza, and Sara Apare. Our dear comrades are still held as political prisoners and the state prosecution on the last appearance, which was apparently conducted via Zoom, had the audacity of exhibiting their usual arrogance by, tell, by telling the court that they were not in a hurry to finalize the investigations since they had a latitude of time of six months within which to do so. The court was according to 26th August 2024. Members, I invite you, whoever can make it on that day, let us storm court to secure freedom and liberties of our colleagues. 26th, take, keep it in your diary. However, I am pleased to inform you that their spirits are solid, indomitable, and they are ever chanting, we shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Deep in my heart, we shall overcome someday. Honorable, honorable commander, commander land forces, you should teach me more about. And I suggest we should make it our anthem. One of these days we should discuss this. Angry to Rinawe, you clap for her. She's a real fighter, and she has commanded all the forces. I, in the same vein, no, before I come to that, I allow me also thank the legal team. Wanda, Ronald, and the team who are here, thanks very much. Bayan Turinawe, where is Bayan Turinawe? Thanks very, from day one, he has been pursuing that matter. That one is a son to Honorable Ingrid Turinawe, and he's doing wonders area. We are mentoring him. He's very good. He's very promising. We thank you for the commitment. In the same vein, I wish to salute our gallant leaders and members who have stood solidarity with our force in 36 by way of contributing towards their welfare, both in prison and some of their loved ones. You can continue with that generosity to keep our family, the families of our comrades strong and surviving. I also recognize the efforts of those members who faced the wrath of the state machinery in the course of delivering the protest note to the Kenyan High Commission and they ended up being remanded for two nights on a ridiculous charge of being a nuisance. These ones were led by Dr. Kamara where they pushed the Dr. Kamala, as if they were pushing an elephant. Very, very unfortunate. An elephant is Enjou, Enjou, Enjou. He looked like a real Enjou, as they were pushing him. And the charge of nuisance and either and disorder, you know the way they are treating it these days? We know we shall have time to discuss that. All these protests, all these protests, whoever they arrest, hide and disorder. Hide and disorder. Uh, for instance, if you hold a placard like this, Anita must resign, Anita must resign, that you are hide and disorder. Anita Mongo must resign, you are a nuisance. Now, who is a nuisance between these God guarantee Ugandans and the Anita Mongo? I invite this delegate's conference to deliberate on the possible mechanisms to be adopted to secure the release of our colleagues. Mr. Chairman and honorable members, allow me to sum up my thanking by, no. Mr. Chairman and honorable members, allow me to sum up by thanking every one of you for the immeasurable sacrifices and the contributions you continue to make towards the advancements of the liberation in the face of a harsh political economic environment. I know even for you to assemble here, you have sacrificed a lot. Those who transported yourself, thank you very, very much. Those of you spent the night here, you are hundreds. I have nothing to say, but you really demonstrated the commitment you have towards liberation of the, is the struggle. On behalf of NEC, I say Asante to all of you. May God bless you. For God and my country. Now, 
have a proper round of applause for the president. Another one, please. Yes, thank you very much. Now, distinguished delegates, what is contained in the report is a whole journey of a year. The president has recapped what brought us here and how we came here. And it will soon be a month since terror was meted upon us and the party chairman had to, to jump through the wall. All that has been recapped for you to remember why we are here. But it belongs to the past. I want you to digest the content of the report with some entertainment. Now, as the entertainment comes, I want to tell you that we have young leaders from the universities who want to reconstruct intelligence, knowledge. Universities are areas of knowledge, not rumor-mongering. So they want to reconstruct that space, the intelligentsia. And so I want to invite Makere University chapter, Chambogo University, Islamic University, and Metropolitan. Please step forward and we give you the responsibility of re-establishing knowledge. Kabale University, if you're here, I'm inviting those who are here because I want to, them to grow the university space so that knowledge is at the center of our existence. Please step forward there. Please, 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 in front. And I want you to introduce yourself. When I was a university girl, I would walk quickly and show off. Please, introduce yourself. Yes, one Uganda, one people. My name is Blambare Brian, a representative of private students, Jambogo University. Thank you so much. One people, one Uganda, Deston Mutambi Nkuruma Makere University. One Uganda, one people, Ema Kereloe. Ema Kereloe. Uwe, uwe. Uwe, uwe. Ema Kereloe. E winning goal. E losing guzi. E losing zi. Ra, cha, ah. Hello. I'm Atonjiro Hirai from Makere University. A member of FDC. One people. My name is Biamka Maivan from Makere. Makere. A winning goal. My name is Puana Saz from a vice person in FDC Makere chapter. <laughs> FDC Hoi. Dr. Kijabe S. Jehoi. Uh, for us, as we young university, we are demonstrating for change, and we must change for the better. I'm called Marian Talema from Uganda Pentecostal University. One Uganda, one people. Uh, my name is Nasasra Makro by Ohio, Makere University. One Uganda, one people. I'm Gordon Semahore, Kabari University chapter president and the former grad aspirant, Kabari University. Thank you. FDC OA. FDC OA. One Uganda, one people. I'm Ahim Suge Claire, FDC chapter, Kabari University. I'm a speaker. God bless you. FDC OE, FDC OE, one Uganda, one people, 
My name is Ahereza Darlington, and I'm from Makere University. FDC oil. FDC oil. FDC oil. H ambo kozo. H ambo kozo. My name is Kami Kaze Namanya Bashaija, a student at Chamago University. I did president aspirant last year, and uh, the current uh, president FDC chapter Chamago is concerned. A Marxist Zionist who believes that actually power grows out of the bar of the gun. FDC is all. Thank you very much. FDC way. One Uganda. One people. The only, the, one, the only thing to fear is fear itself. My name is Musinguzo Wahab Wright, a chairperson of chairpersons at Islamic University in Uganda. FDC way. FDC way. One Uganda, one people. Thank you, Makaze. Thank you, people. Can you clap for them? I want them to walk knowing that the future belongs to them. The future we are talking about today belongs to you. And we want more of you. So thank you very, very much. You hear their names. Nkuruma. When he was born, his father and mother thought that liberation should come through him. They named him Nkuruma. So continue to do the work. Now I want to invite you the dance of the royals from Acholi. Patongo. Pajule. Agago. At first, we hit your gadgets with our state-of-the-art digitalized mobile studio with the debate on the road behind the wheels. Later, we launched our magnificent studios located on Plot 1A, Sewagude Close, Lukulinanganda, Machindi, Kampala, where we bring to you our must-watch shows like The Mighty Drive, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m., Hotline, Mondays, 7 p.m., As for Lego Matters, Twins at Bar, Tuesdays, 11 a.m., Wednesdays, 6 p.m., is Afro-Caribbean Link, where we connect Africa with the Caribbean. Voltage on Thursdays, 7 p.m., featuring a youthful panel. Interface with Dr. Kiza Besije every Friday, 12 p.m., with his call to action against injustices. Snap Talk, Saturdays, 6 p.m., with the trio. A must-watch, The Political Dice, Sundays, 8 p.m., with the duo that never stammers, and so much more. Watch us live on all our social media platforms. We are the Alternative DigiTalk. Real issues, real talk.